Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get lit, we get fly, we talk stuff, we get high, but to the masses, we're just a podcast called Verified. I'm your host, I am Joe Paul. We are here with my brother from Israel, Etan. Uh, yeah, um, see, I forgot how to pronounce the last name already. No, let's keep that. Let's uh, keep it. Wait, Etan uh, Chittatat. Oh, uh, I com- completely butchered both. Etan Chittayat, but you know, you're Eitan, such a nice Eitan, guy that okay. you're, you're, you're forgiven. <laughs> my my apologies. Listen, I'm saying I'm sorry to you and I'm sorry to Hashem. But anyway, what's up, brother? It's fucking great to see you. Yeah, I feel I'm like we've like... known each other forever. It's it's crazy that this is the first time we're actually like like video chatting. So welcome to the Verify Podcast. How are you, my brother? I'm good. I'm I'm actually um it was a difficult day, a difficult evening. Sorry to start on such a downer because um the hostage families released video of five women uh and and it was very difficult but speaking to you right now is i'm actually uplifted because um i mean we'll talk i guess your viewers will hear about how we met but we've been in i think daily contact and and we've never really spoken like this before it's the first time so it's like i have a friend and i'm meeting you for the first time properly so i'm yes, actually do. very very happy a, friend, a brother a brother thank you achi achi as we say. Yeah. So I'm happy right now. Right this minute, I'm very happy. Good, good. I know it, it is a very somber moment um, for anyone, you know, that, um, you know, sees on the day that we're recording, you know, the videos have been released finally. And I've been saying that they should have released these videos a long time ago, even though it is crazy to say, yeah, release the videos of rape and torture and murder and and show these sadistic bastards, you know, for what they really are. When especially there's so many people that are denying the atrocities and trying to make light of it and calling it some sort of a resistance movement. And by no scale of the imagination, could you possibly fathom a place where this could be considered at all acceptable in any sort of humanitarian, even the in, like even the inhumane people say, yo, that was some fucked up shit. So uh, I come, I completely understand. And my heart goes out to all the families and it does take. 15 seconds for you to just say bring them home now that's even it. less bring them home now absolutely so shalom my brother so shalom. Uh, let's uh, let, let, let's try to you know um like you know bring it to an uplifting topic you know um yes. let's, uh, let's let's tell the audience you know how we met um you know I, i've been saying for the longest time that uh hamas has done what uh yeshivas rabbis and scholars have been trying to do for the past thousand years which is really like unite the jewish people to one real cause so um when october 7th happened as terrible as it is it did uh give a chance for you know people of all walks of life you know from the jewish faith jewish really even non-jews to be able to unite in this common cause and because of that i met a brother that i feel like i've known forever and we've basically been in contact and i feel like we are you know crusaders in our own right and what you have done for our people is is just so necessary it's so necessary because your voice is very unapologetic it's like you don't you don't give a shit about any sort of negative backlash you're going to tell it how it is and really that's how israel should be it's like listen this is harsh this is war but this is how it has to be whether it's just or not you you decide what side of history you want to be on but israel was attacked their borders were breached People were murdered. People were raped. Stop denying about the babies being beheaded. Stop denying about people being shoved in ovens. Stop denying that houses were burned. Stop denying that it was that they only went after military targets because they did not go after military targets. They, if they were lucky, that maybe they they killed a couple of military people or personnel. But at no point in time are there any military objectives that are around the kibbutzim. So ah, I'm triggered now. <laughs> Oh, fucking bastards it's, no it's it's hard to um yeah it's hard it's hard and then we we start talking about it and then it's kind of like it's, it's a realization it's almost like we're yeah. talking about a ba- like a movie that we're living in and it, um it literally like if we, we could spell jumanji j-e-w you know i mean it's a yeah. it's it, <laughs> i mean it's a term over here you know the seventh level fifth level or seventh level of jumanji but that's what it feels like. We're in a world that is completely turned upside down. Like we went into the matrix and woke up in 1939 Germany. Like what's the sentiment amongst like the people in Israel right now as to what the hell is going on? Like from both perspectives, from how it seems over there and then how you're viewing us and the fucking mayhem that we're doing over here. So I think um, 
I think, hi, first of all. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, what's up? Um, that's a big, a big question to open up with, but it's, 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 it's a good question. Look, people, people are continuing here to live, um, but it's not our normal lives. It's, it's very difficult to put into words the heaviness that we're all walking around with. And I'll, I'll try and give you an example. I know that in the States and in Europe, you know, the hostages are not front and center. You know, every country has their own, you know, they have, people have their lives and that's understandable. But in Israel, first of all, the attack was devastating and shook our sense of security um, with what they managed to do and the people that they managed to kill. And the people are not really people, it's family. We all know someone. We all know someone who knows someone. We all have brothers and sisters who are right now on the front lines and have been pretty much since day one. We all are feeling this. So there's that. Then there's the security that we we felt a little invincible and it's it's like you 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 figured out that you were you were not impervious to yeah. to an attack it's like yeah. superman just felt the kryptonite bullet yeah i mean we always have terrorism here and we know that we're not invincible but we felt that we were invincible to this kind of massacre um, and to be in the same situation where we have not been able to defeat Hamas and we have not been able to get our hostages back and our boys and girls are still on the front lines and we know that we have Hezbollah in the north and we know that the world, at least in the media, is against us, it's, it's this heaviness, to go back to your question, which, which we all feel, you know, I caught myself the other day actually on a podcast when someone asked me the same kind of question. And I was tempted to say, yeah, we're thinking about the hostages every minute. And we're not. We're not thinking about the hostages every minute. We're thinking about them, though, every hour. At least once an hour, I think we, each one of us thinks about them because it's on the radio, because it's on the streets. It's on, it's on, on, it's on, on your feeds. Like it's you can't, feeds, scroll, but you it, can't. Uh, I mean, depending on your algorithms, you can't scroll through your feed without seeing something about the hostages. Where somebody's it, saying, "Yeah, bring them but home. it's not even." Yeah, but it's not even like on social media. It's like as you're walking down the street. I went to the train to Jerusalem the other day, and on the way to, on the way to the train station, which was like a 15 minute walk, posters of hostages any everywhere, massive billboards of 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 hostages in the train station on the platform, like everywhere you go, the front front of mind as they should be so and we all know that it could have been anyone like this happened around an hour's drive from my housemate this this could have been me i could have had friends at that party um my it's so it's it's so personal so that's what we're going through and we're still going through it and we're not as united as we as we as we should be or as we'd like to be because there's still a lot of you know, division as to why we haven't gotten the hostages home. How could this have happened? Are you for Netanyahu? Are you against Netanyahu? There were the the, the pro, you know, uh, democracy marches that were happen for, happening for almost a year before October 7th happened. So it's heavy. It's really, really heavy. But at the same time, we go out, we go to work, we support each other. We went through an absolute nightmare in the initial months just just to get back on our feet was very very difficult but we went through that all together so there's a lot of um good that has come out of this awful awful tragedy um but the mood is heavy there's no denying it it's heavy what's um I hate to just jump like right into there's so many questions that I have, like, you know, just to fire yeah. off because it's like, go, you know, the, pers the perspective that you can offer as well as like, you know, I mean, for the people that don't know who you are, I mean, I encourage everyone to, to follow Ethan because one, he's a, uh, he's a brilliant, brilliant person, great content creator, you know, oh, uh, really, you. Somebody, really somebody that stands on principle and he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Like there's no, there's no real bullshit that, you know, comes out. Um, so what's like the sentiment of, how we're acting over here with um with all of these protests on all these college campuses like what kind of uh what kind of clown show do you think we look like over here 
you know, I, there's so many ways to answer that because you you have this amazing sense of humor about you. So I just start playing the circus music. Dun, 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 dun. No, no, I think I need it. I need it. Um, it. You know, I've been doing what I've been like. I'm not an 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 influencer. I'm not a Jewish advocate in the sense that this is my career. I have a small branding agency, a boutique branding branding agency, which I which I I I've been running for 15 years. I'm that always, Jew. Uh, no, no, the, well, the advocacy. <laughs> yeah, one of those. I'm just shouting them all out right now. Yeah. Oh, you can shout this one out too, Star of One. Um, oh, there we go, Star of One. Make sure you cop the shirt, Mer merchandise. I'll put the link down in the bio. Make sure you do it. Thank you, sir. Um, I think, so the branding agency work that I do, though, is for companies. It's for, you know, corporations. It's for small, you know, consumer. It's for retail, hotels, you name it. Um, and I... I'm not that surprised at what has happened in the United States because I've been saying this for for quite a few years that the universities and a lot of other people have been saying it as well that what's been going on on campus you know it it didn't happen a year ago or 2 years ago or 5 years ago in fact there was a film called Hate Spaces made around 7 years ago a documentary about what was going on on college campuses and what has been going on on college campuses is is not the fault of the kids it's the fault of Qataris and Saudi Arabia back in the day funding a narrative, branding, like literally investing in branding, investing in a message, investing in an audience, uh, grassroots, building it up and playing the long game. And that's what a brand, how, a good brand how, how, does. How culpable do you think are the professors? Also, I mean, listen, a lot of, and, and there's proof of this, that a lot of the um departments for middle eastern history you know people were placed there with an agenda and if you, you can follow the money and see where the money's coming from so it's not a surprise the surprising thing is how quickly it exploded and how quickly we saw that in the face of not having the guts to say wait a second this is wrong like the general public the silent majority in the face of such atrocities that the silent majority are really, really silent. I think that is the shocking thing, that you're so afraid in America to say the wrong thing for fear of being canceled that you say nothing. Well, and I think that is, well, yeah, the majority are not saying it. And I think that's the shocking thing for a lot of people here. Look, we're too busy. We've always been, I think, in Israel too busy to you know, to not, not, not care, but we've got so much shit going on over here. So what happens in America, it's okay. They've got their issues. The Jewish community have got their issues, but, but I think that a lot of Israelis have woken up to a, just how bad it is over there, anti-Semitism or Jew hatred and B that we're in it together. Like the day after, or the day of October 7th, I put out a video and I said, I'm here for you to Americans, just like you're going to be there for us. You know, you could immediately see that this was going to, it was going to get to this stage, but, but the amount of, of hatred and the success of the brainwashing and the absolute cluelessness of your leadership uh, and this woke world that we're living in uh, where people are not allowed to say things that might be deemed controversial and get canceled because a hundred thousand people will will shut you down on social media or not speak to you at work. Um, it's like that's the shocking thing. There's there's literally no gray left in America. It's black or it's white, and that is the that's a that's a very scary thing for the world because people look to America for. The, your values and your 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 system and the system is so broken that um it's it's quite terrifying and i think we're more worried for america than than we are for ourselves i'm not talking about security I'm, i i mean and i'm only speaking for myself um mm -hmm. i know a lot of israelis would disagree with me because they think that this country is really fucked but i'm more worried for where america is going than where israel is going in in terms I of see, I see America go. I see America going in the direction that London is going every Saturday afternoon in London Square. If they don't speak up, that's that's exactly where it's headed. And, and I feel like uh, this is like I, I was. Um, 
you know, not to get into politics, but I was one certain way before October 7th. And I continued to be that way a little bit month over month, but I started seeing things and I'm like, wait a second. Why is this, why is this being prolonged? Like, why isn't he just saying you have 48 hours to produce the hostages? You know that Israel is going to retaliate and we shouldn't be the ones to tell them, no, you can't go get your hostages. I don't understand why we didn't have that objective right from square one. I don't know why we gave billions of dollars to Iran, to, for Iran to give it to Hamas to build this pier. The whole reason for the blockade after the second intifada in the first place was to stop weapons and ammunition from coming in through the Mediterranean and coming in through Egypt because Egypt agreed because the blockade went up at the exact same time. Now you just gave them basically a lane to use the seaports to do something. And what did we see? The first shipment of aid happened, got looted by Hamas. I I'm think, triggered. I think, that you, I think that you do know why, though. I mean... I, I'm I'm I would never say um, anything uh, generic about a people, but there's no denying that there are. I don't know what the exact number is: one point five, one point six billion Muslims in the world, and there are no, no one point two billion Muslims. One one point two billion is it? Yes, 1. you said 2? you said you said million, so it's one point two billion Muslims, I'm and there's sorry. only and there's only fifteen million Jews. Right. That was just so, a, that, that was a statistic that I needed to needed to know because I needed to understand the methodology behind these Jewish charlatans and self-loathing, self-hating Jews that are speaking against the Jewish people and against you know Israel. And it got me thinking: if I own them, if I want to market a product, who do I want to market it to? One point two billion Muslims or fifteen million Jews? Yeah, and I think that's. It's it's not that all the Muslims are bad people. That's no, not, not at all. What I'm not 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 what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like you have a natural audience for the last hundred years or so that that a lot of Muslims are taught to hate Israel, and um and you know when when the when Hamas came over the border they weren't speaking to us as Israelis they were they were they were speaking to us as as Jews you know as as Jewish people so Yehud, you know, that's what they call us. Yep. So you have an audience um, that is soaking in this propaganda that is coming from somewhere for a very, very long time against a very, very small minority that... Um, a meek it, mi minority at that. I wouldn't say I weak, would, meek. Yeah, I, I just... So it... it so when when you think about the numbers and you think about the amplification that they have and you think about the amount of money that they that the people who are fueling this propaganda are pouring into this not since October 7th I think that's the big misconception this is decades and decades for a while. and decades a long time so and I, I don't think people know that so when you actually stop to think about what's happening it's like Nazi Germany didn't happen overnight Nazi Germany was a movement and 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 people invested money in it and there was a narrative that, that was created and they had Hitler youth you know they recruited young 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 teens German teens to teach them hate and then right. these people who who taught, who who learned this hate would even turn in their parents if they if it if what they were doing didn't subscribe to Nazi ideology so it was, then, it was it was basically the nationalist movement and and every and every country in Europe from you know the southern from the northern tip of Russia all the way down you know to the Baltics you know everyone had to send, had a nationalistic vibe and actually the way that the Germans conducted themselves um you know even before you know the Nazis came to power just the Germans itself with their nationalist movement is what attracted the I believe the last Sultan of the Ottoman Empire to basically form an alliance with, with Germany because they respected power and and their nationalist vibe and this is what they had to do so but it it yeah. did not that, so the hatred the, yeah it didn't happen overnight and the hatred that you're seeing in the middle east is a combination as you've probably seen from my, my videos with ellie um it's a combination of of jihadism and, and and nazism and it blew up because now in this world that but, we live in you're, 
Yeah, exactly. Pardon the, the pun. If uh, you are if you are oppressed in this world, then you're you're a victim. If you're an oppressor, if you're stronger, you know, then you're deemed an oppressor. And and that's just kind of like the that's the starting point in the world that we live in today. There's no room for debate. And I think that that's one of the problems is is you're coming off as if you're accused of being a Goliath, which we're not, then the accusation is enough to to keep you down and you have to get out of that. Now, it's very hard to get out of when you're 15 million people up against 1.2 billion Muslims. And all that, that have 15, been taught that, to, and that 15 million, it's not 15 million because we see that there are Jews that are against us. So drop that fi and all 15 million are not up for the fight and not all 15 million actually speak up and not all 15 million even give a shit. So it's like you take that number and you could just drop a couple of million right off the top of that. I yeah, mean, you, and you could and you could do the same on like unwin numbers, you know, of the, of the body count. It's like, yeah, you could do the same thing with the Muslims, too. I mean, you can. But 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 the bottom line is we're vastly outnumbered, but it's no surprise to me. And that's why when people I'm 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 starting to try and tell people to stop being so surprised, like I'm talking about our community, to stop being so surprised that we live in this upside down world. We live in this upside down world because our enemies who are sworn to, and, and maybe your viewers don't know this, but they're sworn to eliminate the Jewish people, like literally to finish us off. Our enemies have been I mean, to quote, the, to quote the exact term, for, for a long, for a long, long time, they've been at this for decades, decades. and I mean, and now centuries. it's yeah, I mean, part, centuries, part of, part, actually centuries. Yeah, part of their yeah. ideology, you know, in their charter, you know, or in their manifesto, so to speak, is chase every last Jew behind the last rock and tree until the last Jew is caught behind the rock. Yes, exactly. And a, a lot of people don't know that, and I think our job you know, as advocates. Um, and thank you very much for the compliments. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like a professional advocate, but, but I do try and speak my truth based on facts and which you're very good at and you're very learned and I'm not as learned as you, but you, but you, but you know, and you study and you learn and you put that out there, which is so important. It's to start educating people as to not what is emotionally going to trigger you like a picture of a dead baby, but to to learn the facts, to understand what this conflict is all about, to understand why that baby is dead right now. So that's, I think, the job of people like you and people like me moving forward as we continue with our regular day jobs, which I have a regular day job, um, and for us to start being vocal and to not be scared to be who we are. Because if I, when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror, I'm like, I don't really hate anyone. I don't want anyone to die. I don't want anyone to not live peacefully and not have a job and not be able to raise their children. I want exactly what I have for others, as long as those people are not trying to take my life away from me. And that's where I'm un unapologetic. You know, you can have a great life and you can have a life but not at the expense of the lives of my children and my family. And I think that's what people need to understand because that is something that is an every man statement. Every man on the planet, every woman on the planet would say the exact same thing. So when there are people that are sworn to your destruction and they actively want to kill you all the time, and it's I'm not saying it's the Palestinians, I'm saying it's radical Islam and anyone who subscribes to it, which unfortunately are a lot of Palestinians, then it's fair game. Then if you're going to say, destroy Israel, kill all the Jews, then no one should be shocked when Israel goes on the attack to try and take out Hamas and retrieve its hostages. And people are going to die in the process because it's a war. But People are being told that it's a genocide. People are being told there's an apartheid. People are being told that we're colonialists. People are being told all sorts of terrible lies. And that's why I try us to, to educate them. And that's why I try to teach everybody every single day all of these buzzwords that everybody uses. And I have facts to back it up. And I have, you know, real substantiated proof. And there's there's really no holes in in history that you can't really, you know, say, oh, well, that didn't happen. There's maybe one event, but 
it's documented so terrifically, you know, by Benny Morris and the, the birth of the Palestinian refugee problem that you can't really, I mean, thank God there's a hard copy because I know that a lot, there's a lot of powers that be are going digitally, you know, in and trying to actually switch the facts. And I don't know if you saw that meme, you know, of, Hey, Google, you know, how many Jews died in world war two? Yep. I'm yep. sorry. I don't understand the question. And then it's like, Tell me about the Nakba. It's like, that's when the Jews violently expelled 750,000 people at gunpoint from their homes and houses and murdered and massacred them. And it's like, wait, what happened? Well, let me let me ask you a question, right? Because because we don't know each other that well. I, I do want to understand something. Your world is is hip hop, right? Your world is in well, music, in, in, music. music. In I mean, I'd say with a with a predominant, you know, um, emphasis on hip hop because that is what I do. And, but I'm, all, and, all, I, all and I imagine that you have a lot of followers that are not Jewish, right? Tons. Okay, so I want to say something to your followers. Okay. If Hamas was in New York City right now, they would come to this guy's house, this guy that you follow, okay, this, this man, and they would execute him. That's it. Now, that's what Hamas would do. It's it's just like the Nazis, but in many ways worse. So this is a friend of yours, and they would come over, even if he supported Hamas, they would come over and they would kill him because that is what radical Islam is preaching. And and your followers need to think about that. There's no ifs, there's no buts, it's just fact. That's what they want. So the next time you see college students demonstrating in the streets, and they're supporting Palestinians who support Hamas. Punch them. It's a, no, it's, Wait, well, no. it's as simple as that. You need they, they, but they need to understand that your your viewers need to understand that that is a fact that's not disputable. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter how cute I am, how much history I got. Just because I am Jewish, they would kill me, and it it irks me to the to no to no end when I argue with some people that I used to call friends when they're trying to tell me that, like, you know, Israel is bad and this and that. It's like, yo, they would kill me. For that reason alone, if you don't, you know, condone what they did, you're a jerk of get out of my life. There's no reason. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. And matter of fact, suck my fucking Jewish kosher dick. So and that that's my stance on it. And my viewers need to know that, yes, Hamas would fucking kill me in the worst possible way and yeah. i hope it does and i hope it doesn't happen and if it does Ethan, it's up to you to get everyone and fucking go get those bastards it's Anyways. you know it's 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 really um i think the biggest problem that we have is is there the haters you know and then there are the people that really don't know they really don't know like your friends a lot of your friends really don't know they don't understand they're being we're our narrative is being drowned out by a propaganda machine. So what we need to do is I think we need to appeal to the middle ground and not just say, um, you know, things about, not just talk about feelings. You know, we have to, we have to look at the facts on the ground and we have to make them look at the facts on the ground and make them understand and make them care that facts actually matter. Because if you're living in a world where where facts don't matter, then then you can get away with anything. You know, consequences, you know, in the Second World War. Here's we, the problem. I, I don't want to yeah. finish that thought because I, I don't want to cut you off. OK, so in the Second World War, here's a fact. Um, the Nazis had to be absolutely destroyed absolutely pummeled and the allies killed millions and millions of people to kill off the nazi regime which would have resulted if they had succeeded the nazis in in enslaving and probably killing hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of millions of more people that is a fact now if you were transported yourself back to the second world war would you have said let's not get every single last nazi you would have, you would have said, because otherwise America would be fucking Nazi Germany by now. So these facts, which are uncomfortable, is like, if you have a gun to your head, you're going to try and take out the person that's holding the gun. And that's what we're doing. But what they do is they show you a woman, they show you a baby, they show you teenagers, but they don't show you the terrorists using them as bait. 
They don't show you the textbooks which are filled with hatred. They don't show you this is all propaganda and we are being we're drowned out. We're, right. We're caught in the matrix. And it, and when you try, and I've tried because I'm the type of person, I'm not scared to talk to anybody, especially when I'm armed with all the facts and all the knowledge, as well as, you know, we Jews like to call it the chutzpah, you know, to speak to anybody. I mean, even though that's Yiddish, but so when I've tried to speak with these people, they are so far gone that anything that you have to say is all part of an Israeli agenda, Jewish narrative, propaganda, lies. You can't you can't trust them. And it's like when you actually when you actually come to a point when you realize that there is no going back from this moment moving forward, that I can't trust you as somebody that I would even call an associate or a friend. It's like that's when I'm done trying to explain it to you. Get the fuck out of here because it's going to get bad. And I know yeah, that there's I, I, and there's some people that really uh, might have to learn the hard way because it's like they keep going and they keep digging. And it's like, yo, listen, if you don't want to listen to the facts and pick up a book or like watch a fucking YouTube documentary from somebody other than, you know, a, a TikTok star, you know, like go even watch, you know, from. You know, from the Arabs point of view, from like on Al Jazeera TV, there's plenty of documentaries that document. And yeah, they they you know, it is c completely funded by Qatar. But the the end result is still the same. Like you can't distort some of the facts that are caught on video. You can't say, no, that's not what we're looking at right now. So some people are too far gone. And when you talk about arming yourself with the facts, they don't even want to hear it because your facts don't mean jack shit to them. Yeah, because they've been brainwashed already. They're not objective anymore, and and they've lost the ability to. And you've, we've talked about this, and a lot of us have talked about this. There's critical thinking is out out of the window. But I think that there are ways to disrupt that. Like if someone say asks me if I have, you know, it's part of the Jewish agenda or the Zionist agenda or the Israeli agenda, then I say yes, I do have a Zionist agenda. I do. It's to survive. My agenda is to survive. That's. See, no. we see, I said, so I would take that as an opportunity to educate them. And when they say, well, is that, you know, is that part of your Zionist agenda? Be like, first, before I answer that question, for context, what's your definition of Zionism? And find out exactly what they think. Is it the demonized version of Zionism, which is the, you know, um, colonialize, imperialize the entire land of Israel and kick out everybody and, co and colonize the land? And, you know, um, every, every Jew has all the rights, but no, no one else has dick. Like, so if that's like their, if that's their thought process, then I'm like, all right, I don't think that we should have the discussion because Zionism is literally just the Jews feeling like we should have a place that we can call home and we can feel safe. Just one place. That's it. You know, Chinese have China. Japanese have Japan. Afghans have Afghanistan. You know, Jordanians have Jordan. Iraqis have Iraq. I mean, I could go on and on and on. You know, Americans have America. You know, it's not, it's not unheard of, you know, but there's no real place for Jews, I'll continue. Well, they'll say that it's that they'll say that it'll it, that they'll say that it was stolen, and then you have to go back. And it's very easy. It's very easy for someone to say it was stolen. It was stolen. Oh my God, your land was stolen. That's awful. You know, that is then it is I, very. I can't believe, but it's very I difficult. Can't believe the British stole it from the Ottomans. I, I we had no idea. Yeah, but the problem is, man, is you know that, you know, but when, but if you, if you just flow with me for a second, if, if you have someone that says my land was stolen and they're angry and they're shouting, even if they're wrong, they still believe you don't, it. You have to understand, because, have to understand because, where they're coming be, from. Because you, because you empathize with their emotion, but then the facts are much more boring. I can tell you, I, I have two kids. Okay. And when they fight, I've been fooled many times because one of them is much more emotional, making much more noise, making a whole tantrum. And the other guy's just, I didn't do anything. I'm like, sure you didn't. Sure you didn't. Come on, why is he crying? I'm, I'm, I, that's not to say that, that, that the Arabs that lived on the land that they had a chance of getting in 1948 and didn't seize that because their leaders were, were idiots it doesn't mean that I don't empathize with them. I, I wish they did receive some of the land. 
but they didn't and that's just a fact and that's not me saying it that's the un that's that's right. that's a fact I mean, I, but I then mean, yes. but then you're yeah. up against but 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 this is the thing you are up against emotion and emotion is much easier to respond to it's much easier to get behind than facts than facts and that's our problem so how do we get more emotional and i want to go back to what you said about me and the way that i deliver my stuff I don't try. No, I just no, I don't. This is an interview about you. I'm supposed to be telling you are great. Everything that you do is wonderful. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. But, no, the, but here's, I think, the, here's the reality. I think it's about, important. But I think it's important, though. I think it's important to say this one bit and then and then tell me what you think. It's just like empathy is important. Empathy absolutely. is important. And, and facts are important. There needs to be a combination um, of yeah. facts and empathy and not facts and facts and facts and zero empathy or lots and lots of empathy and like and until we get to that place we're all in a lot of trouble when i say all i don't mean the jewish people i mean the entire world you know no you, and, cult- and you and you've helped me with that you know what let's give them a perfect example because let's talk about when I started posting actually on my page rather than my stories, because I had a whole beef with Instagram when people were allowed to buy the blue check. And, you know, I was like, ah, fuck this. I'm not going to post anymore. So I sent you a couple of posts about me rapping. And in, in the first one, it was like, yeah, I want to get behind this. But it's like, it seems like you're not empathetic to the people. And then I put like the little slip ins where it's like, you know, I'm not talking about the people I'm talking about Hamas, you know, and and I did a little breakdown of everything. And then even, you know, other videos where you're like, hey, Joe, be like, it seems like you don't give a shit about them. And it's like, I do, I do. So it made me think about it. It's like, how can I convey this, you know, in a, in a correct manner? So, I mean, I have to thank you for, you know, not only the way that you deliver your message, but the way that you've helped me deliver mine. I think oh. it helps reach a lot more people and it doesn't alienate the people that, you know, might often just say, oh, fuck this kid. You know, what does he know? So that's why I yeah. always say, you know, my heart goes out to anyone that's lost their lives. And then I go into my spiel because yeah, it's like, and I don't oh, think so empathy. Yeah, and I don't think that what you're doing is is kind of like a, a a tactic coming from a place of um of 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 not being real. I think that we're angry, and so when it comes out, you know, it can be very one sided. But but watching your stuff, it's very clear to me that you care, and and if you care, then then I think that we need to say that we care, but we also need to say. But not a, we don't care so much to the point where we want to commit suicide, and I think that I, I think that the Jewish people overall care. You know, we care about life. We 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 want the best for everyone. But what we don't want is we don't want to be killed in the process because eh, been yeah, there, bad. done that. It's just it's it's just not so. I just I just think it's really important to, to that it's not some it's not some tactic or let's tell them what they want to hear. It's just it's more a self narrative like you care you care about life you actually do care about those people dying and and we should say that but we should also say but i'm not going to take a hit uh to save someone else if it's my children on the line it's just cuz that's suicide and that's not what i believe in so uh, i try and approach it like that not because it's it's good branding i try and approach it like that because that's what's that's what's in my heart and i've spoken that's up being for being a good human being yeah, I mean, I like... think so. I think I think so. I think it, I try and be a good human being. You know, my 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 kids. I've done a lot for peace. I've fought for peace. I've written films about peace. And like twenty, we're going back twenty years. I worked with Leonard Cohen. Um, I've I've mentored Palestinian students. It, I've tried, and and I will continue to try. But right now, my priority is survival. My my Zionist Jewish agenda is to survive as missiles are being launched right above me you know literally yeah. Yeah. literally said, at me right, right when you said the time that we were going to go on i was like he's gonna i was like he's oh we're gonna hear sirens he's gonna have to go into the bomb shelter and then I, we're gonna have to pause so uh, people don't realize that on a nightly basis rockets are fired into israel pretty much every single day of the week well, well oh you tell me i mean because uh, i mean That's we true. don't know over here because you know the iron dome is, is so good at you know, deflecting them and catching them that it's like, it's not even worthy of news over here. But if you had to say how many days a week are rockets being fired into Israel? Well, for the, since 2000 and 
uh, five or was it 2007 on a, on, there have been many, many, many times where there have been weeks or, or, or a month where there's a Hamas, a Hamas war breaks out and they, they shoot uh, rockets at us all over the country in the South, in the North, in the middle of Israel. Um, October 7th, um, it was a few months of rockets all over Israel. Um, and then when the IDF went in, it has been relatively quiet in the center of Israel for a couple of months now. Um, that said, in the north of Israel, sorry, in the, in the south of Israel, Hamas still manages to launch rockets at the south, which means that people are in bomb shelters. In the north of Israel, there is Hezbollah in Lebanon, and they are launching barrages of rockets consistently oh, lately. Goodness. And people don't realize that like like 80 to 125,000 Israelis have been displaced from their homes from northern Israel. But the media just forgets to cover that. Like they can't go back to their homes. I'm not even talking about the people that live along the border of Gaza, you know, in Israel proper that, you know, uh, can't. I don't think that, that I don't think that they forget it. I, I think that I think that honestly, it's more appealing and more triggering and more emotionally, um, you know, uh, you know, clickbait more, yeah, clickbaitish to show dead babies and dead women and dead, you know, everyone in a in a war, than to show, at the time around three, you know, a few months ago, three hundred thousand displaced families. What is there to show? There's nothing to show that, but but they are displaced, and there's nothing interesting about rockets being fired and no one dying in israel because israel takes care of their own there's nothing exciting there newspapers won't sell but there is a lot of excitement showing poor palestinians being killed and i'm not mocking it they are poor palestinians but the onus is not on israel the onus is on the people who are doing that to their own people and that's hamas that's the bit that's surprising why aren't they talking about that it's not the that they're. I mean, I have a question. Like, do do the Palestinians, like the Palestinians that live in Gaza, uh, I mean, West Bank is a completely separate separate topic. Let's just talk about Gaza right now. Do the Palestinians in Gaza, and, and I'm not sure if you if you know, um, but do they think that Israel is oppressing them or that Hamas is preventing them from progressing? I don't is it know. About I think or I about think prevention of progression. I think that it's hard to answer that question because the mindset of the average Palestinian based on the polls before, during and after October 7th, 75 to 85% of Palestinians in the West Bank and 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 Gaza support Hamas. And what does support Hamas mean? It means that 75 to 85% of Palestinians want Israel gone. Um, right now, I imagine that everyone in Gaza is pretty pissed at Hamas, I imagine, because Gaza has been pretty much destroyed because of Hamas, and they didn't get Israel. Um, it's a very difficult question to answer because you have to ask yourself, well, does the average Palestinian think it's worth being oppressed to get back what they think is their home? A lot of Palestinians would say yes. I would like to think that there that that there are enough Palestinians who feel oppressed by Hamas and say enough. Let's let's live in peace. But um, or they it's too really far hard to. I mean, two thousand seven when 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 you know they killed you know Fatah you know and they bounced the you know Palestinian Authority out of Gaza and they took over. You know, UNRWA has been feeding them indoctrinating material, you know, since then and before. But now, it, you know, it's even worse. So are the people too far gone where some sense, some sort of like, I mean, and this happened in Russia with de-Stalinization. It happened with the Nazis, you know, with, you know, uh, de-radicalization. So I don't feel like we can actually move forward without some sort of intervention of de-radicalization of, you know, of the population. Because there will, how, there will, how, yeah, how can Israel ever... How could the world ever, and I'm not saying that the Palestinians are such bad people. What I'm saying is that they've been taught very, very bad things, and they have not allowed us to explain to them that this is not the real way it is. Like Israel is not 
the enemies. Everything that's been taught to you has basically been a lie to prove how you know, the Palestinians are not a non-complacent entities, you know, that uh, I think it was a uh, Rashida Ryder um, of the Ottoman Empire had sent a letter to the Palestinians, you know, calling them, you know, a you know, a bunch of non-complacent entities and they need to prove their worth and you can't let the Jews take over because this is the last stand of the, you know, the Muslims of the Ottoman Empire. And we can't, basically, we can't go out like that. You can't let the Jews beat us. So this is almost like, this is like they're trying to get a lick back, you know, from hundreds of years of bullshit. I'm triggered. Yeah, um, but I think you're right. I mean, there's a piece that I made with Ellie and it was, uh, you know, I think the 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 last line was it's time to let that shit go you know but i think in arab culture um you have and, and you have it also in jewish culture uh and you've had it in 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 many cultures um in the last you know hundreds of years is this notion of honor and tribal thinking and i think that the middle east there are certain um countries that are moving away from honor and this tribal way of thinking and trying to embrace it, you know, just moving forward. And then there are other cultures that are stuck in that tribal way of thinking and are not keeping up with the Western world in that way. So I now, think when you, say, good... when you say honor, are you referring to Sharia law honor killings? Or, you know, in, no, in some, I'm sort of, I, some sort of aspect? No, no, I'm just actually just talking about honor. What you said about, look, I mean, I think that the, 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 the Muslim again, I'm not making a generalization about Muslims, but I'm talking about historically Islam. They have it in for the Jews because the Jews would not convert to Islam. And so, you know, Jews were treated as second-class citizens, and there's a history of real Jew hatred and anti-Semitism in, 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 in Arab culture. Um, and, and that's not me being Islamophobic. Islamophobic. It's just, it's just a fact. And, and I think that there's this yeah, Jews had to the, Jews had to dress a certain way. They were not allowed to ride horses. They were not allowed to hold any positions of power. They were not allowed to own slaves. Um, they were not allowed to attack back when they were hit by somebody. They'd have to go to the authorities, and then they would take care of it. But most of the time, they would wind up getting beat up again. I mean, we we know how it's how, how it was to live under Arab rule. So it's not like we're pulling something out of our ass and saying, "Yeah, I guess that's how we're how they're going to make us live." We've experienced it. We know it. Right. So, and, and I think that maybe a lot of your viewers don't know that, but for example, my dad is from Iraq. My mother's from Bulgaria, you know, Bulgarian Jew and an Iraqi Jew. Now the Iraqi Jews were in Iraq for thousands of years, like yeah. the same communities. And well, my that's, dad was well, ex that's ancient Babylon. I, I literally right. explained it in one of my videos that when the yeah. ancient Babylons came and sacked Judea, that's where modern day Iraq is. That's why you could trace a lot of our lineage back to, back to ancient Iraq, which is ancient right. Babylon. Continue. Exactly. And that's my and that's my father's heritage. Now, my father was, along with his entire family, was thrown out of Iraq with no belongings. They were not allowed to take their belongings in the 50s. Why? Because Iraq was against Israel and Jewish people were, you know. Uh, so what, what what's that called? What's that buzzword that everyone talks about nowadays? What happened to your father out of Iraq? Go ahead. Say it with me. They were the father. Ethnically were, cleansed. Ethnically cleansed, right? So they they were. My father was ethnically cleansed, and he came and he came to Israel. But I, I want to go back to what you said about honor, because it wasn't about Sharia law. Everything that you said about um, the way that um, Arabs and, and 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 Muslims in the Middle East regarded Jews as they were nothing. They were they were they were they were really treated like nothing. Now you imagine that. All of a sudden, the Jewish people managed to get a homeland, and not only a homeland, but the homeland where there has always been a Jewish presence. It's the same homeland that is in the New Testament and the Old Testament. It's their indigenous homeland, which is in the oldest book available. Anyone can read it. It's in every it's in hotel the, it's drawer. In the Quran also. It's also I in the Quran. Israel's so so like you imagine... The Quran. Right. So you imagine all of a sudden that those Jews that you hated managed to get a country of their own and not only did they manage to get a country of their own that land was up for grabs to be divided between arabs and jews like that's that's what the situation was the jews accepted the petition plan in 1948 the arabs who were living in the land did not it doesn't matter why they didn't <laughs> they just didn't and then the arab armies around israel five of them attacked 
after Israel after. declared its a day after it, Israel declared its independence for the land that was given to them, they managed to repel these five armies, and they ended up the Jewish people ended up conquering more land that was meant to be for the Arabs. So going back to honor, can you imagine what it must be like for an Arab to have they lost faith, they lost face, okay? And for a tribe, for tribal culture to lose faith and to your honor is, you know, you need to restore your honor. You need to restore your dignity. And they've been trying to do that for almost a hundred years and they're not succeeding. I don't think that viewers understand that this tribal mentality is something that gets in the way of peace. It's not about land with the Palestinians. It's about uh -huh. the, the Jewish people that they think that the Jewish people are evil, the Jewish people are nothing, the Jewish people are worthless. How can we, the Arabs or the Muslims in these Arab lands, and again, I'm not saying this of all Muslims and I'm not saying this of all Arabs, but that notion of honor and the fact that they have lost face is something that stings. And it really, it's time to let that shit go. But they won't let it go. Well, do you and think so we'll just keep surviving. It... Well, <laughs> we'll just keep surviving. Do you think they'll be able to let it go if there are some concessions that are made from Israel's side? Like, I mean, I, I mean, we we all know the path forward, but it can't happen without somebody that we can negotiate with that is not, you know, a radical dictatorship that wants to, you know, kill every Jew on the planet. So it's like we already know that that's not going to work. So it's like I, I feel like the world is bugging because. Israel doesn't have a plan for what's next for Gaza after Hamas is defeated. But um, did you want them to wait for them to get attacked again before you do that? I mean, it just does, it just doesn't make sense. It's like you don't really wait. I mean, it's the same principle of why were there protesters outside on October 8th in Manhattan saying stop the genocide before Israel even retaliated? It's like I think you, they knew that Israel was going to retaliate and they and they used that to their advantage. And they banked on the fact that they were going to go as hard as shit and try to blame all the civilian death, get the uh, get the Hague involved, get the uh, ICC, the ICJ. This is a I'm triggered. This is a calculated fucking mess. Get us out of it, Etan. <laughs> <laughs> I think it I think it starts with perception, really, and ends with perception. If you the look perception at perception, you fucked. No, I'm kidding. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I think once people start to become aware of the truth, then we have a chance. If you look at Russia and Ukraine, why is Israel not getting the same um, defensive uh, kind of like, a, you know, that people are defending Ukraine in the West? They're like, no, Ukraine needs to defend itself against Russia. I'll tell you why. Because Russia, for the past 30 or 40 years or even more, its brand is an oppressive brand. It's they're the bad guys. You know, there's nothing nothing good about Russia from the Western perspective. But and the Ukrainians are embracing democracy. You know, and they have been for for, for a long time. So when Russia invaded Ukraine, then it was simple. The oppressor has the they weren't bad because they invaded Ukraine. They The Russians were bad before. That was the perception. So when they invaded Ukraine, the good guys, then, okay, we're all getting behind Ukraine. But what happens when when Hamas, okay, invades Israel in a world where Israel for the last 30 or 40 years has been deemed the oppressor? The perception is that Israel is it's the Goliath. The Goliath. And so I think that perception is really, really important. And, and that's that's where the work is. We need to make people understand the truth. And it's okay. It's okay if a thousand people um, are saying, you know, 999 people are saying something and one person is saying another thing. If that one person is correct and has the truth on his side, then eventually, God willing, that truth will spread to the other 999. And I think that we do have the truth. I really do. But we haven't deployed our narrative. We have had our narrative hijacked. A lot of people talk about the fact, Joe, that, that on October 7th, we our military was fooled. Our 
intelligence was fooled, our leadership was fooled, and all of that is true. But for decades, our narrative has not been invested in. It's the one area where the Jewish people, including the diaspora, like the Jewish people all over the world and Israel, no matter which government it is, have failed miserably. I've been saying that for 15 years. And, um, but if there's one silver lining, which has been an awful price to pay, it's that I do think that we have woken up, the Jewish people have woken up to the fact that narrative is important and we need to get our story out there. It's so important. Agreed. It's Agreed. it's so important. I mean, amen, amen. And it's like, I don't I feel like we should like end on that because it's like, I don't know if, I don't know if anything else that we say is going to come out more perfect than that. But, you know, um, but, you know, um, we didn't even get, there was so many things. We're going to have to do another one of these. I'm sorry. So I'm going to have to do it. When, we can do it whenever you want. I really, you know, I'd love to, it's, it's a great excuse to now see you is, is there you this go. thing. Uh, you know, you know what? I'll have you on my podcast. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, why don't you tell uh, the viewers, like, you know, uh, the name of your company, where they could find you, how they could buy some merch, how they could support you, and how they can keep Hamas from coming into my house and killing me? Well, first of all, don't let Hamas come into his house and kill him because uh, I like him. He's a nice guy. He's a good guy. He's a that, nice Jewish boy. Thank all you. that bravado, Thank all that bravado aside, you're nice. At the end of the day, you're just a nice Jewish boy like like the Thank rest you. of us. I appreciate um, it. Are you going to have, if you're going to have links, um, there's a store called Sweet Poppy Lane, and they're selling uh, some stuff. And there's Stars of the Tribe. If you look for I'm That Jew, um, there's stuff there. Um, and anyone can go to my Instagram, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it's Eitan Chatayat underscore words. And there's a link in my, you know, in my bio, and you can find out more about me there. But um, it's, it, it's it's displayed right here. It's all right. I, I'm gonna. Oh, it is. There I, it is. <laughs> so so I got you. This covered. is after the edit. After the edit. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking and, in like future tense. But it's like, yeah, it's right here. It's done. You know? It's right here, of course. It was there all the time. Um, and just thank you. Thank you for having me on. And if I may say one one more thing about you, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, because it it it's inspiring, it's important, and it's truth. So so listen to your boy, viewers, because he knows what he's talking about. He's very, very educated and he's spitting a lot of truth. So thank you for that. Thank you, man. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate, you know, your your words. I appreciate everything that you do for our people and for anyone that hasn't, you know, had a chance to actually experience all that you have to give. I encourage everyone, take a look. He does tremendous things. You know, he's the head of a whole bunch of different campaigns and a lot of people listen when he speaks because he speaks the truth also and the eloquence that he does, even when he says, I don't like you. Like that was the great, that was the greatest thing that I, that I saw, but I'd like to, uh, I'd like to leave you with a quote that I, um, that I end all of my podcasts with. Uh, I'd like you to attribute this to your life as I attribute it to mine, as well as all my viewers. I hope that you do the same. We are all just here for a small cup of coffee. I'm just trying to drink it while it's still hot. This is your boy. I am Joe Paul. We are the verified podcast. We've been rocking out with I'm that Jew. Shalom, motherfucker. Mr. Eton. Make sure you follow us both on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe, like, do all of that good shit. And we will see you next time. I love y'all. Peace. Peace.